Hey, how everyone? So let me just double check uh, with the connection and see if everything is working. So I'm also uh, okay. So let's see. Okay, yeah. Welcome all. So today we will have a super super short uh, tutorial because I think I've made a big mistake. I should have set the homework deadline one day earlier so that I can talk about the homework one solution now. But instead, yeah, I don't have nothing <laughs> to much to say. So instead, I have prepared something that I find it very interesting for you. So today's topic is about this binomial coefficient. And then, uh, so, so let us recall, so in the traditional binomial coefficients, we have n choose k. And then n choose k represents the number of ways to select k items out of n items. And then we have found that, okay, it turns out that we can compute its value to be n times n minus 1 up to n minus k plus 1 divided by k factorial. So basically, we have n, we start from n, they are all together k terms multiplying together in the numerator, each term is one less than the previous one. So we can use this notation n to the power k with a bar here. This is the falling power. So n to the power k falling to represent the, the numerator. And similarly, for the denominator, it is k factorial. So k factorial, you can represent it as k to the power k falling. And then in such a term here, when we are talking about these binomial coefficients, we would normally assume that n and k, they are both non-negative integers. But then, there is actually no reason why we must restrict n to be an integer or n is something non-negative in this particular formula. So if you look at this, so n could be a real number. We can set n to be a real number. So we, it is still well defined. We start from some real number r, and then multiply it with r minus 1, r minus 2, and so on. All together, there are k terms multiplied together. Then in that case, as long as k is a non-negative integer, then we will see that this formula is well defined. And then we assume that anything to the power 0 is equal to 1, as what we are expecting. Okay, so if you are not taking anything, so you are multiplying things by just one, okay? Then, if we have made this change, then something nice will happen, okay? So we can have something called the generalized binomial coefficient, where we are not restricting n to be an uh, integer, a positive integer. And then, if we are doing so, then using Taylor's expansion, we can try to expand this term, 1 plus x to the power r. We find that it will be equal to what? It will actually be equal to this thing. So it is going to be an infinite series, summation of all the possible cases when k is equal to 0 up to infinity, r choose k x to the power k, and then this formula works for any real number r. So in particular, let's see why it works for positive integer. So for instance, let's say r is equal to 2. So we know that 1 plus x, this, this, this term square is equal to 1 plus 2x plus x square, and then there are no other x to the power 3 terms, x to the power 4 terms. But then it is still correct, it is because 2 choose 0 is 1, 2 choose 1 is 2, 2 choose 2 is 1, and then how about 2 choose 3? So 2 here, when r is equal to 2 and then k is equal to 3, what will happen? Then by using this formula, we are setting 2 as the first term here, and then we take 3 terms, and then at the bottom part, we are dividing this by 3 factorial. But if we start from 2 and taking 3 terms, we are multiplying what? We are multiplying 2 with 1 and then with 0. So there is a 0 term here. So that so that 2 choose 3 automatically will become 0. 2 choose 4 
is going to be 2 times 1 times 0 times minus 1 divided by 4 factorial. So again, it is going to be 0. So we will see that using this generalized binomial coefficient, this 1 plus 6 to the power r can be expressed at, as something on the right-hand side, and then it works for all positive integer r. And then, in fact, yeah, if we replace r by any real number, it also works. And how about r is a complex number? So I will leave this for you. What I think is it also works. So it will also work. So, but in any case, then what we see that is if we have generalized the definition of a binomial coefficient such that we just restrict the bottom part to be non-negative, but the top part, it could be any real number, then we can have this binomial theorem, the generalized binomial theorem. And we have also studied some identities involving binomial coefficients, such as this one. So we have R items, out of them we are choosing K, and then the number of ways to do so is the same as we try to get R minus 1 choose K, and then R minus 1 choose K minus 1. This is called the Pascal identity, right? Yeah, so basically we are holding one item, call it a special item, the number of ways that we are not selecting this special item is r minus 1 choose k, and the number of ways that we must include this special item is r minus 1 choose k minus 1. And then this identity works for any k greater than or equal to 1, yeah, so that we will make k minus 1, yeah, this is the, the part in the bottom part, right, the smallest term here, to be always non-negative. But then a question here is, does it work when r is real? So, so for instance, is it true that I can have 3.1 choose k is always equal to 2.1 choose k plus 2.1 choose k minus 1? Is it correct or is it not correct? Yeah. Now, interestingly, this is also correct. And in fact, a bunch of identities will also work. Now, the reason is... So I will just mention it here, but then if you want to know more, so I will I will prepare the details in, in, in the slides that I will show you later. But then the idea here is that you can visualize the left hand side, left hand side for any fixed k. So let's say k is a fixed integer. Then the left hand side is something like what? The left hand side is something like so we will replace n by r. Is that okay? So it is equal to r times r minus 1 times r minus 2 up to r minus k plus 1 divided by k factorial. And then you can think of this as a polynomial in r. So this is a polynomial in r with degree k. So it is a degree k polynomial in r. And similarly, anything on the right hand side, so this is also a polynomial in r. Yeah, although it is r minus 1, but it is still a polynomial in R with the highest degree k and the polynomial in R with the highest degree k minus 1. And so we will see that, overall speaking, the right-hand side is a polynomial in R of degree k. So if we look at this as an equation, so suppose that this is a certain equation, R choose k is equal to R minus 1 choose k plus R minus 1 choose k k minus 1. So you can think of this as a certain equation in R. And then it is an equation in R with degree at most k. And we will see that this polynomial works when R is equal to k, when R is equal to k plus 1, when R is equal to k plus 2, when R is equal to k plus 3, when R is equal to k plus 4, and so on and so forth. In fact, it works for any positive integer R where R is greater than or equal to k. So this is what we know from, from our previous knowledge. This is the case where we are doing a combinatorial uh, argument that r choose k must always be equal to r minus 1 choose k plus r minus 1 choose k plus 1, and uh, k minus 1. So we know that this is true for any r. And this is now very, very strange. We have just mentioned that we are talking about 
an equation with degree at most k, but then we will see that it has so many roots. It has r is equal to k is a root, r equals to k plus 1 is a root, r e equals to 2k is a root, r equals to k plus 7 is a root, and so on and so forth. So it has much, much more roots than k. So what does that mean? So if it is truly an equation or a polynomial in R with degree exactly k, then by the fundamental theorem of algebra, we know that there can't be more than k roots. But here we see that there are k roots. Then what does that mean? There is only one explanation. So this is not any polynomial in degree k. This is exactly a zero function. So, so the left-hand side is always equal to the right-hand side. So it is not a polynomial in R. So that, that means that it will work for any R that you plug in because it is actually after evaluation, it is we will all, always have zero is equal to zero rather than R to the power something plus R to the power something is equal to zero. So we must have zero is equal to zero. So in that case, it means that it will work for any R that we can imagine. So it will work for the case that R is real. It will also work for the case when R is a complex number. Okay, so later we will see some other uh, identities involving binomial coefficients. And then, so for instance, we will have also something called the van der Waals identity. So the van der Waals identity is easy to prove based on combinatorial argument. So once we have this new identity, we will find that it can be generalized when the top part, this part, the in the binomial coefficient here is not an integer, not a positive integer. It will also work when it is a real number as well. And then a direct proof for that one will be super, super hard. In fact, we will make use of the combinatorial argument to show that it is working for infinitely many cases and then use the polynomial argument we just have now to show that it will also work or it must also work whenever this one, this value of r here is a real number. Okay, so I think that's all. This is something that is super interesting, I, I believe. And then, yeah, I will, I will make the the slides here complete and then send it to you for reference later. And then, yeah, that's all for today. Yeah, and then we will meet again on Thursday. Okay, see you. Thank you.